ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सायरा मुश्तबा द हेडलाइंस Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address the ministerial conference on counter terrorism financing in New Delhi today. 788 candidates in fray for the first phase of Gujarat Assembly polls. India says UN Security Council reforms are need of current geopolitical situation. ISRO to launch the first ever private rocket from Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh today. And in cricket First T20 international of the three match series between India and New Zealand to be played at Wellington today. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will deliver the inaugural address at the third No Money for Terror ministerial conference on counter terrorism financing in New Delhi today. The two day conference will offer a unique platform for participating nations and organizations. to deliberate on the effectiveness of the international regime on counter terrorism financing this conference will enhance the global cooperation to restrict the financing sources to terrorists our correspondent reports that over 70 countries will participate in the conference deliberations in the conference will be held in four sessions these will focus on global trends in terrorism and terrorist financing use of formal and informal channels of funds for terrorism emerging technologies and terrorist financing and international cooperation to address challenges in combating terrorist financing 15 multilateral international organizations including interpol and all the connected multilateral organizations and stakeholders will participate in the conference It will be attended by 450 delegates from across the world including ministers, heads of multilateral organizations and financial action task force heads of delegations. Suparna Sekhia, AIR News, Delhi. Ahead of the No Money for Terror ministerial conference, a session was held on financial action task force and India's priorities in G20 Anti-Corruption Working Group ACWG in New Delhi yesterday. organized by the department of revenue the session was co-chaired by president financial action task force t rajakumar and secretary designate department of revenue sanjay malhotra heads of delegations of fatf member countries and heads of indian regulatory and law enforcement agencies participated in the session the session highlighted india's priorities for the acwg during its g20 presidency matters pertaining to international cooperation in investigation of corruption and other economic crimes were discussed during the event india's robust anti money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism framework was highlighted during the event in gujarat a total of 788 candidates are in the fray for the first phase of assembly polls in this phase voting will be held on 89 seats out of 182 assembly seats on the 1st of december meanwhile the scrutiny of the nominations for the second phase of assembly elections will be taken up today till yesterday 1515 nominations were filed for the second phase candidates can withdraw their nominations till the 21st of november polling for this phase will be held on the 5th of december Our correspondent reports that this time a large number of young voters will play an important role in the state assembly elections a report More than 11 lakh 74000 young voters will vote for the first time in Gujarat due to the initiative taken by the election commission in the first phase there are around 5 lakh 87000 youth voters in 89 assembly constituencies whereas in 93 seats of the second phase nearly 6 lakhs youth voters will exercise their franchise the maximum number of young voters are in Surat Ahmedabad Banaskatha Vadodara and Dahod districts Significantly the election commission has given the right to vote to the youth who have completed 18 years on 1st April 1st July and 1st October with Sanjeev Sharma Aparna Khun AR News Ahmedabad International Tourism Mart for North East Region began at Aizol in Mizoram yesterday addressing the media before the inauguration The Union Minister for Tourism, Culture and Donair G Kishan Reddy said that the government under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has deeply focused on developing infrastructure of the northeast region as the tourism sector would not grow without infrastructure. The Maharashtra government has decided to double the pension of freedom fighters from 10000 to 20000 rupees per month 
Accordingly, freedom fighters associated with India's freedom struggle, Marathwana Mukti Sangram and Goa Liberation Movement will benefit from this decision. The state government is likely to incur an additional expense of 74.75 crore rupees due to this decision, which was approved by the state cabinet yesterday. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, run the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. The month long Kashi Tamar Sangamam has started in Varanasi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will formally inaugurate the event tomorrow. The Sangamam is being organized by the Government of India as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and to uphold the spirit of Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat. Delegates from 12 different categories will come to Kashi from Tamil Nadu during this one month period and interact with their counterparts. Preparations for the grand welcome of the delegates are in full swing. A report from our correspondent covering the event at Varanasi. Kashi le ongalallariyum varvayaragirum means welcome to Kashi. And the city is all set to welcome the first batch of delegates who will arrive tonight at Varanasi railway station. Mayor of Kashi, Mridula Jaiswal, told AIR News that people of Kashi are ready to welcome the delegates of Tamil Nadu and the event will bring the two cultures together and revive the ages-old connections. Kashi Vashiyo ka bhaot bada sabhaag hai ki humare Tamil bhai ajo काशी विश्वनाथ कॉरिडोर की महत्ता उनके लिए है उनको समझते हुए कि काशी विश्वनाथ बहुत पुरानी संस्कृति से हमारे साथ हैं वो पहले काशी विश्वनाथ की पूजा करते हैं फिर उसके बाद रामेश्वरम का एक दर्शन करने जाते हैं मोर देन 2500 डेलीगेट्स फ्रॉम तमिलनाडु विल बी विजिटिंग काशी सुशील चंद्र तिवारी एआईआर न्यूज़ वाराणसी the endeavor is in sync with National Education Policy 2020's emphasis on integrating the wealth of Indian knowledge systems with modern systems of knowledge. IIT Madras and BHU are the two implementing agencies for the program. India's first ever private launch of Vikram suborbital rocket will take place at the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota, today. All arrangements are in place for the rocket to be launched at around 11.30 a.m. The countdown of the launch will begin at 8.30. More details from our correspondent. The mission program will carry three customer payloads, Space Kids India, Bazoom K Armenia and N Space Tech India. The one-stage rocket is equipped with sensors for securing data, including measurement of acceleration and pressure. This mission is a milestone in the history of ISRO. A non-government entity, the startup Skyroot Aerospace Private Limited, had developed the single-stage Vikram suborbital rocket. Weighing 550 kg, the rocket will reach a maximum altitude of 101 kilometers and is expected to splash in the sea after an overall duration of 300 seconds post launch. Skyroot was the first startup to sign an MOU with ISRO for launching its rockets. Union Minister of Space Dr. Jitender Singh is expected to participate in today's launch. With Joy's report from Chennai, Sarabjit Kaur, AIR News. India has said the longer the reforms in UN Security Council are stalled, the greater will be its deficit in representation. India's permanent representative to the UN, Ruchira Kamboj, said this while delivering the G4 statement at the UN General Assembly, UNGA, on equitable representation of the UN Security Council. Ms. Kamboj said, reform in the Security Council is an inescapable precondition for its legitimacy and effectiveness. The ambassador said the item on equitable representation in the Security Council was included on the General Assembly agenda more than 40 years ago in 1979. She said it is regrettable that work on the issue has nothing substantive to show even after four decades and consequently the Council still does not reflect the current geopolitical landscape. We uphold the need for a comprehensive reform of the Security Council with the expansion of seats in both categories of membership, equitable regional representation, more transparent and inclusive working methods, and an enhanced relationship with other UN bodies, including the General Assembly. Our support to the common African position has also been clearly voiced. We are convinced that almost everybody would agree that the Security Council is in dire need of reform. Minister for Environment Bhupendra Yadav has said that India is committed to both domestic action and multilateral cooperation on climate change. 
He was speaking at a session on Accelerating Resilient Infrastructure in Small Island Developing States, SITS, at the COP27 Summit at Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. Mr. Yadav said that India will continue to fight all global environmental concerns in the call to protect the humanity's planetary home. He said that the government of India stands firmly committed to safeguarding the interests of SITS in a changing climatic regime. India and Australia held the fifth bilateral cyber policy dialogue in New Delhi yesterday. It was convened under the auspices of the India-Australia Framework Arrangement on Cyber and Cyber-Enabled Critical Technology Cooperation and Plan of Action 2020-25 for a comprehensive and deeper cyber cooperation. The dialogue was co-chaired by Joint Secretary Cyber Diplomacy Division, Mwapoy Saiwi, from the Ministry of External Affairs. The two sides agreed to explore opportunities for further collaboration with the private sector and academia. Both the countries will jointly conduct a cyber boot camp as well as cyber and tech policy exchanges in collaboration with the Indo-Pacific partners. On to sports now. In cricket, India will take on New Zealand in the first T20 match of the three-match series today. The match at Sky Stadium in Wellington will begin at 12 noon Indian Standard Time. Hardik Pandya will be the captain of the T20 team. Kane Williamson will lead the New Zealand side. All India Radio will broadcast live commentary of the match from 11.30 a.m. This can be heard on the FM Rainbow and Indra Plus channels. Parts of North India are expected to experience cold conditions in the coming days. The northwesterly winds coming from the Himalayas to the Gangetic Plains are expected to bring down temperatures in the areas. India Meteorological Department has said that the western Himalayan region is likely to receive mild to moderate rainfall and snowfall over the next few days. The Med Department has forecast that the temperatures in most of northwest India may come down by 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. The temperatures in Delhi are expected to gradually drop by tomorrow. In the past week, several areas of Himachal Pradesh have received widespread snowfall and extreme cold climatic conditions. Snowfall occurred in Lahore, Spiti, Manali and other higher areas. In Jammu and Kashmir, Pahalgam and Gulmarg experienced snowfall and cold conditions. Meanwhile, a low-pressure area lies over southeast Bay of Bengal and neighborhood. It is likely to move west northwestwards and gradually concentrate into a depression over central parts of south Bay of Bengal tomorrow. Under its influence, widespread rainfall with heavy falls are likely to occur at isolated places over Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Tamar Nad, Puducherry and Karaikal are expected to experience heavy rainfall, rainfall from November the 20th. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Webhav Jyotsna Srivastava. Thank you, Sarah. Papers have covered different stories today. Hindustan Times headlines, COP27 pledge may repel West's bid to skirt blame. The Tribune writes COP27 draft omits India's proposal on fossil fuels. The Pioneer notes Centre challenges SE order on release of Rajiv's assassins. On the horrific Shraddha murder case, the Asian Age writes Aftab sent five-day remand. Court also permits narco tests. The Hindu on its front page notes Supreme Court agrees to list plea for collegium system review. The Indian Express reports 14% conviction in Poxo in a fourth of cases accused known to victims, says study. Techies abroad are looking out for jobs in India, writes the Economic Times, adding as Meta, Twitter and Amazon go on a layoff spree, Indian origin employees in US are eyeing for jobs in India. And finally, another proud moment of breaking the glass ceiling, the states notes Sandhya Devanathan to replace Ajit Mohan as Meta's India head. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address the Ministerial Conference on Counter-Terrorism Financing in New Delhi today. 788 candidates in fray for the first phase of Gujarat Assembly polls. India says UN Security Council reforms are need of current geopolitical situation. ISRO to launch the first ever private rocket from Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh today. And in cricket, first T20 international of the three match series between India and New Zealand to be played at Wellington today. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day. <laughs> 